the truth about exposure compensation. What is exposure compensation? Should you use it? What are the benefits to using exposure compensation? What are the negatives of using exposure compensation? Because always in photography, if there's a positive, there will be a negative. And there is a downside to using exposure compensation if you're not using it correctly. Now let me start off by showing you two photos. One of this lighthouse and one of Cradle Mountains in Tasmania. Which of these two images do you think is correctly exposed? Before we go any further, leave it in the comments if you're willing to take a guess. Which one is it? The one of the lighthouse or the one at Cradle Mount with snow at the top? Two very different exposures. Now let's look at the lighthouse image again with all the settings there. Can you see exposure compensation set to zero? My exposure was also correct. Now take a look at Cradle Mountain. Exposure compensation set to zero. The image was also correctly exposed. Why would two images totally different be correctly exposed? Look at the scenes. One is just a very bright sunny day. The Cradle Mountain image was taken on a very overcast day. But there is about 50% shadows, 50% highlights. So the camera adjusted for that and gave me a correctly exposed image. Not as bright as the lighthouse, but there was no sun shining at that time. The image cannot be bright and beautiful like the lighthouse. Now on the Nikon's exposure compensation can be found just near the shutter button here. And it plays a crucial role when we take photos. Exposure compensation can be used in the following four modes. In program mode, in shutter priority mode, in aperture priority mode, and in manual mode, but only if you are using auto ISO. Exposure compensation will not work in manual mode if you have set the shutter speed, if you have set the aperture, and if you are on manual ISO, because you have total control of the camera then. Why? Because the camera doesn't have control over part of your exposure. Remember exposure, you have ISO, aperture, and shutter. One of those three need to be controlled by the camera for exposure compensation to work. If you're moving about and you're taking photos in more than one direction, let's say walking down the track, you see something to the right, you take a photo and all of a sudden you look behind you and go like, wow, that is a beautiful scene. You turn around and you take a photo without adjusting your exposure compensation, the photo will either be underexposed or overexposed depending on how you set up the camera when you are shooting in the first direction. Now this afternoon I took a few photos using exposure compensation to show you that shooting in one direction and then without resetting the camera shooting in another direction will give you a wildly different image. You can see here I'm shooting towards the setting sun and just above the shed here it is very bright. The image is well overblown in this area. I adjusted my exposure compensation to minus 0.3. So I reduced the exposure. Now I have a correctly exposed image. Slightly darker, but no highlights are blown. In photography, blowing out the highlights is something you don't want to do unless you're doing it on purpose. For example, high key photography. For normal landscape photography, we don't want to blow out the highlights. So this image, the highlights aren't blown out. Sure, the shadows are dark, but I'd rather have darker shadows than blowing out my highlights. I can't retrieve any information from a white area, but I can retrieve the shadows to a certain extent. Now, after these two images, I turned around and photographed in the opposite direction. The first image, exposure compensation is zero. The image is correctly exposed. Now, with exposure compensation set to minus 1.3, the image is quite dark. I can increase the shadows, but why add more work to your post-processing? Because if you're increasing shadows just because of your laziness, not to adjust exposure compensation, you're adding noise. Now, something that you have to be mindful about is if you've been using exposure compensation, when you're taking a photo. If you turn the camera off, exposure compensation stays there. When you turn the camera back on, a week, even a month later, exposure compensation will still be there. Reset your exposure compensation to zero. That way, you are sure not to have any issues. Another factor that you have to remember is that if you've used exposure compensation, for example, in auto mode, 
and you decide to go into shutter priority or aperture priority or manual exposure with auto ISO, that same exposure compensation will be added to all those other modes. It stays there until you reset it to zero. So be very mindful of that. Now let's take a look at some photos that I took while we were traveling around Tasmania to show you the difference with the exposures. So this first image here of Cradle Mountain and the famous boat shed, exposure compensation is set to zero, but just above Cradle Mountain, those white clouds are overexposed. So I had to dial down exposure compensation to minus one to get all the clouds correctly exposed. The boat shed is a bit dark, but in post-processing, I can easily lift the shadows up and get a great photo. After this, I just walked around the other side of the boat shed and took a photo facing the opposite direction. Now look at these images. Exposure compensation is set to zero. The foreground is quite dark. The clouds are still not being overexposed. So I increase exposure compensation to plus one. Now my image is correctly exposed. Look at the difference between the first photo and this photo, totally different. This next image was taken at the base of Nelson's Falls. Exposure compensation set to zero. It's quite dark, but why did the camera choose this? In the top right hand corner, the image is fairly bright. The camera has tried to adjust for the scene. When we're shooting landscapes, we're shooting in matrix. If you're using Nikons, if you're using a Canon, it's evaluative, which means that the camera is metering for the whole scene. So because there's a small bright area in that scene, the camera is trying to adjust the settings to suit what I'm shooting. So I increased exposure compensation by plus one. And now I have a correctly exposed image. But exposure compensation can also help you get that specific shot that you want. Take a look at this photo here. This is correctly exposed. These trees here, they look quite nice. But when I looked at this, I had an idea that if I increased the exposure, I would get sort of a high key image. There was a lot of moss on these trees and it looked beautiful. So I increased exposure compensation by plus two. You can see this image is very different to the first. Now look at them side by side. They are very different. The second image, two stops overexposed, but it is something that I like because now we can see all that moss and it's like the trees are glowing. And this is the image that I had in mind when I took this. And I specifically overexposed the image by two stops to get this image. Now, during our travels, we drove down to Strawn and we took a boat cruise up the Gordon River. By the time we got into the Gordon River, it was getting close to about 10.30, but it was very cloudy. So the sun was to our left and this area here was to my right. But the problem I was having was that the clouds were very bright, but the foreground was a bit dark, but I didn't want to blow out the clouds. I had to reduce the exposure compensation by one stop. All these photos are straight off the camera. They're just JPEG photos. There's no editing that have been done. Now on the way back, we stopped at this small island. I was mesmerized by this tree. And by this time in the afternoon, it was getting very overcast. And you can see this, it's a very dull day, but I've got my exposure compensation set to minus 0.3. Because on these days, this is where mother nature can play a cruel trick on you if you are not ready for it. On a bright day, the sun is not hiding behind any clouds. On a dark day like this, there's a lot of cloud around. But what happens is that as the clouds move around, if you get a bright area in the sky, that area will be overexposed. So be mindful of that. I've hoped you enjoyed the video and you've learned more about exposure compensation and seen that exposure compensation can be your best friend but also can be your worst enemy if not used correctly. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate your subscription. Stay safe, enjoy photography, and I'll see you next time.